Hi there. We are going to get started. Thank you for coming here today. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. And the, thank you for coming and supporting this family. Uh, my name is Angela Chan. I'm a senior staff attorney at Advancing Justice Asian Law Caucus. We're a nonprofit civil rights organization located in San Francisco. And we, along with California Immigrant Policy Center, National Day Labor Organizing Network, uh, MALDEF, uh, and also the ACLU, helped pass the California Trust Act, which was authored by Assembly Member Tom Amiano, whose staff is here today to support uh, what we are doing, just making sure that the Trust Act is followed and due process protections are followed. So we're here today to file a, a tort complaint, and it's a, a precedent-setting tort claim. And also, we're here to file a misconduct claim. So we're actually filing two claims today. One with the County of Sacramento for a violation of Mr. and Ms. Del Agua's rights uh, when Mr. Uh, Del Agua was held for two days in our jail here in Sacramento for immigration, was almost separated from his two uh, children. Uh, the Sheriff's Department uh, was wrong in violating the California Trust Act and wrong in not implementing the new law for several months. The good news is they've started to implement the law. They've also adopted a policy of not responding to any ice holds, but there is more work to be done. They announced that this policy is only temporary, and so we're here today to ask for relief for this family, and we're here today to also ask that this policy be a permanent policy of not holding people for immigration in our Sacramento County Jail. Um, I'd like to thank all the community groups who are here today. Uh, we are each going to hear from a lot of the groups here who've been supporting this family, and also hear from Assembly Member Amiano's office. And we also have representatives from Assembly Member uh, Dickinson's office here today to support this family. Um, so first, I'd like to introduce uh, Sandy, who is uh, with uh, the California Immigrant Youth Justice Alliance. And uh, California Immigrant Youth Justice Alliance, CJO, is pivotal in passing the Trust Act and making sure that it's followed. Yes, hello, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Um, and we'd really like to uh, outline that it took five months for uh, Sheriff Jones to pass the Trust Act, as Angela had mentioned. Um, and we were very fortunate as well that they have also uh, released a no ice hold policy. Um, and a lot of the counties in uh, all over California have passed the Trust Act policy. Um, and it was very pivotal for Sacramento to do it, um, being that they are the capital of California. Um, and they have taken the lead in releasing the no I told policy, which is a, a great uh, pivotal uh, point for a lot of the counties here in California. Um, especially in the northern areas, there have been a lot of no I told policy release, including uh, San Francisco, Alameda, Sonoma, Napa, Santa Clara, and Santa Cruz, just off the top of my head. But I um, really want to encourage other counties to pass similar no I told policy. Thank you, Sandy. Next, we have Carlos Alcala, I'm sure I'm pronouncing your last name incorrectly, from Assemblymember Amiano's office, and he's their communications chief. Hi, I'm Carlos from Assemblymember Amiano's office. I'm here to give Assemblymember Amiano's support to Del Agua and his family. Um, we want the sheriff in Sacramento not just to grudgingly go along with the Trust Act, but to speak out forcefully uh, in support of the Trust Act and the rights of the people in our community to build a better relationship between all the people in our community. Um, Queremos uh, la justicia para la comunidad, para los inmigrantes, para todos. Gracias por venir hoy. Thank you, Carlos, and thank you to Assemblymember Amiono for his leadership in passing the Trust Act. Um, next, we have Alan Ash, with the ACLU of Sacramento. And we'll definitely hear from the family also. Hi, I'm Alan Ash, I'm a member of the Sacramento County chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union. Uh, we at the ACLU have been working for years to uh, limit the use of ice holds here in our local community. That's because uh, holding people, prolonging their detention for deportation purposes uh, hurts the safety of our community because it destroys the trust that local law enforcement needs to build with our local community. It also hurts our safety because it wastes resources that could be used 
uh, for better law enforcement purposes, and it it violates our core values of uh, fairness and due process. That's why the ACLU worked to pass the Trust Act, which prohibits law enforcement from honoring these ice holds in many circumstances. It's why the ACLU is working with our community partners to monitor implementation of the Trust Act here in Sacramento County, uh, which went into effect at the beginning of the year, and then we were happy to hear that Sacramento adopted this policy of not honoring any ice holds uh, on May 15th. Uh, the ACLU of Northern California actually sent a letter to Sacramento County on May 2nd asking them to implement this policy, inciting the case of Miranda Oliveras versus Clackamas County, which clearly held that immigration detainers alone do not provide the probable cause to hold people in our jails under the Fourth Amendment. And that confirms what the ACLU has been saying for years, that law enforcement agencies that have policies that honor these ice holds are maybe liable for damages. And that's why counties all around California and all around the country have been adopting policies that no longer honor these ice holds, like the policy now here in Sacramento County. And the ACLU will continue working with our community partners to make sure that no individuals are held in violation of this policy here in Sacramento or in violation of their rights. And if anyone is held in violation of this policy, it's a sad demonstration of the way that our broken, the pieces of our broken immigration system have sharp edges that hurt real families here in our community. Thank you, Alan. Thank you to the ACLU for your support. Um, next, I'd like to ask Raisa Morris to come. And Raisa was actually the first person to bring attention to this case. She called me on a Sunday night in February uh, saying that this family is going to be torn apart and they're being held, especially Martine Del, Del Agua was being held illegally in violation of the Trust Act. So I want to bring Raisa up here to share the story of what happened. Thank you, Angela. My name is Raisa Morris. I'm an immigration attorney in Sacramento. I'm a partner at Morris and Lopez. And I received a text message from somebody who knows Martine and Julie on a Sunday night while having dinner. And they were telling me that Martine was being held since Friday night for a noise disturbance violation, something that some, usually someone's released on the next morning, if not that same night, or something like that. Uh, and he had been held until Sunday. I went to the local jail. Well, I first contacted Angela. and. Together we put a packet uh, that I emailed to the county jail. I also came to the county jail that day um, and I spoke to the front person. She had never heard of the Trust Act, even though this was February. The Trust Act was passed in October and implemented in January. What bothers me about this is when us citizens, when uh, laws are passed, we're expected to comply by them and we don't have an excuse uh, of not knowing a law was passed. In this case, we have somebody that was being held for over 48 hours in violation of their constitutional rights. Um, I went in, I spoke to the front person, she called the sergeant that was in duty that night. I spoke to him, I gave him my packet, he had also never heard of the trust act, and he also was under the mistaken belief that he had to comply with immigration holds, that they were mandatory. Immigration holds are not mandatory, uh, Attorney General Kamala Harris has also uh, said that in a legal opinion. So I did state that to the sergeant and he went back and I, for about an hour, he reviewed all the documents. Meanwhile, I went upstairs and I talked to Martin and I told him what I was trying to do. I told him that I wasn't sure if it was going to work. I was going to do my best. Uh, after an hour, the sergeant apologized and said that were, he made a mistake in holding him and they would be releasing him within an hour. They did release him that night. However, we know that there was some contact with immigration because Martin got an A number that was a new A number. Um, we know that they told immigration about him and we know that if I had not gotten him released that night, immigration would have came the next morning and picked him up and separated his family. He has two U.S. citizen kids. He's never done anything wrong. He's a good person, a good worker, a good husband, and a good father. So he did not deserve to go to this, through this. 
uh, and I'm so happy that they did release it. However, there has to be some accountability for this type of action because, like I said, as a citizen, we're expected to follow the laws right when they're passed, and we should expect the same from law enforcement agencies. Thank you. Thank you, Raisa. And next, we're going to have Julie speak. Uh, Julie is the wife of Martine. She's also a school teacher, uh, a local school teacher, mother of two, and she uh, fought very, very hard to get Martine released from the jail when he was held by the Sacramento County Sheriff's in violation of the Trust Act and in violation of his constitutional due process rights. So here's Julie Del Agua.
uh, for 48 extra hours, um, probably more than that, and only released him following an urgent intervention from, uh, from Raisa Morris hours before immigration agents were to pick him up Monday morning. Um, his family, his U.S. citizen wife, his school teacher, and his two children were terrified that they would never see him again. Uh, Mr. Dawa, uh, the, the hold that he had to endure, the prolonged detention he had to endure, violates the U.S. Constitution. Uh, as you might have heard, just recently there was a federal court decision in Oregon that Miranda versus Olivares versus Clackamas County that held that, uh, that holding someone is something that can subject the sheriff to liability because these immigration holds are not criminal warrants. There's no judge that reviews them, and they're not based on probable cause. They are not warrants. There is no really legal basis behind these ice holds. And so therefore, if a sheriff chooses to respond to an ice hold, that subjects the sheriff to liability. And so that's one of the reasons why we are submitting these two complaints today. Many law enforcement leaders in California have embraced the Trust Act. So the Trust Act has helped a lot of people. In fact, there was an Associated Press story recently that talked about the significant impact the Trust Act is having in stopping deportations. Um, however, there are some counties that are slow, such as Sacramento, slow to follow the Trust Act and to also follow uh, and protect the due process rights of immigrants. Um, luckily, we did have the positive announcement from the Sacramento Sheriff's Department that they are adopting a no ice holds policy, but they have qualified that it's temporary. And we want to make sure that today's filing of these two complaints, one with the County of Sacramento and one with the Sheriff's Department, is a strong warning to all law enforcement officials uh, that they must properly implement the Trust Act and they must respect everyone's due process rights, regardless of immigration status. Um, and to detain someone violates these long cherished principles. So I'm going to now hand this to Mr. Martin de Agua to share his story, and he'll be sharing in Spanish and have interpretation. Disculpen, 
This situation has affected my family greatly. My wife and I both both work to take care of our kids, and how are they going to be without me? I suffer, and they suffer. They would ask where I was, and when they grow older and understand where I was, they will suffer even more. I was three nights away from my wife and kids, constantly thinking about how they were doing, and I couldn't talk to them or comfort them. When my wife brought them to see me Sunday, all we could do was cry. I was afraid that I would never see my wife and kids again. How could this happen? How could I be arrested and kept in jail all weekend for no reason, especially when this is against the law? I would never want this to happen to any anybody else, and that is why I am here telling you my story. Thank you for sharing your story. And we'll close up by having our two final speakers, and then we're going to go ahead and submit this complaint that I'm holding in my hand, one to the Sacramento uh, Sheriff's Department right behind us, and also around the corner one block away to the county uh, council's office to one is for to investigate the police misconduct that occurred with the arrest the excessive force and also violation of the trust act and then a block away for damages for what happened to the family uh, now i'm going to have alma lopez speak and she's from the sacramento immigration alliance buenas tardes alma lopez sacramento immigration alliance and union civica primero de mayo I want to start by saying that Sacramento Immigration Alliance and Unión Cívica Primero de Mayo fully support the claim against Sacramento Sheriff's Department for the violation of the Trust Act. We began hearing about the violations of the Trust Act in January when attorney Hector Cavazos from Stockton, California had successfully represented a couple of cases. So we decided to follow up on what was happening in Sacramento and what was the policy of the Sheriff's Department. We began requesting meetings on February February 4th, and after various calls and emails, we finally got a date for February 24th. However, a couple days before that, on February 20th, Sacramento Sheriff Scott Jones came out on a press conference stating that he was going to fully comply with the Trust Act and also stating that he wanted to build, the, to build trust with the Latino community. On February 24th, when we met with Chief Deputy Milo Fitch, he stated again, that Sacramento Sheriff Department was going to fully comply with the Trust Act. So we told them that we wanted to fully work with them in building that trust with the Latino community. We told them that we were going to wait for that policy and that we were here with Angela and other attorneys to help them draft that policy. So we decided to organize a community forum on February 24th. We began sending him invitations on March, I'm sorry, that was March 24th. We began sending invitations on March 10th. We finally got a response from Captain Tom Andres that he was going to be attending, not Sheriff Scott Jones. We held the community forum at Estadio Azteca Indoor Soccer Arena where a significant number of Latinos play soccer there. However, unfortunately, Captain Tom Andres was not able to answer the questions that we had for Sheriff Scott Jones. We continued following up. Then we have April, April 15. We followed up asking and requesting a final draft policy. There was none. April 23rd, we continued scheduling meetings. And we finally got an answer for May 2nd. However, it's important to state as well that May 1st, International Workers' Day, there were other community organizations that were organizing and came and dropped off a couple of letters. The following day, May 2nd, we finally met again with Chief Deputy Milo Fitch to follow up on our request, where is the final policy? That day we learned of another violation of the Trust Act, and this is about Angel Martinez, Angel Mendoza. Angel Mendoza was arrested on April 17th, and I believe he was not hold for approximately six hours until ICE came and picked him up. His family did not, did not know anything about him until he was in a detention center in New Mexico. I do want to state that although today we do have a policy that states that they are no longer working with ICE in, in those ICE requests, there's still a contract with ICE that states 
that they are receiving $100 per detainee per day and $40 for transportation and security purposes per detainee. Now, this policy also states that the service, the service provider, meaning the sheriff department, shall provide detainees with reasonable and equitable access to telephones. In regards to Angel Mendoza's case, he had no access to telephones. His family did not find out about him being sent to a New Mexico deportation center until he was there a couple of days later. It's also important to mention that the community involvement and the pressure that has been happening since then, we have a lot of people here who are standing right here couple days after we learned about Mr. Mendoza's case to make sure that the sheriff was held that with the sheriff was held accountable that he was doing something to hold that deportation until today Angel Mendoza is still at the deportation center in New Mexico hopefully it is our hope that this is solved promptly we want sheriff Scott Jones to terminate this contract we want him to fully reinstate that policy and that it becomes permanent. If he really wants to build that trust with the Latino community, he needs to start acting now. Again, we fully support Angela and the claim against her department, department for Mr. De La Huas case. Thank you. And our last speaker, Saida Islam, is going to come and represent CARE. Hola, buenas tardes. Soy Saida. My name is Saida Islam, and I'm here representing CARE. CARE's vision is to be a leading advocate for justice and mutual understanding. The core of CARE's work and all is and always has been uh, to ensure the rights guaranteed to everyone in this nation are enforced. That's why we're here today um, in support of Mr. Pelagua and his family and all of the other people who are suffering from uh, similar injustices. Um, we, we call on to the Sacramento Sheriff's Department to honor the Trust Act and other counties as well who are not honoring the Trust Act. So we'll, we'll stand with uh, Mr. Del Agua and, and everyone else until uh, the Trust Act is, is honored. Thank you. Yeah. Woo. I want to thank all the diverse community groups that came out today to support Mr. Del Agua and his family. I want to thank Assemblymember Amiana's office for being here, Assemblymember Dickinson's office also for being here to support this family. And to all the press that came to cover this, I really appreciate it. This family appreciates it. So we're going to go ahead and file this complaint. We'll take questions after, uh, but we want to go ahead as a group and file this complaint and walk right through this office. Thank you. Sure.